welcome back to my podcast. I am Camilla, your high vibe advocate. Give me 15 minutes and I will give you a high vibe world. Actually, I have a super exciting interview for you guys today, so it will not just be 15 minutes, but please feel free to split the episodes into 15 minute segments if that works better for you. With us today is Charles Botenson, owner and founder of Botenson Properties International, a prominent real estate brokerage company. He has a great story regarding his path to success, and I know many of you need to hear it. And he's also a motivational speaker and has a super cool channel that I will ask him to plug in later so you guys have a chance to listen to him if you feel called. So without further ado, welcome, Charles, and thank you so much for being with us today. Charles, are you there? Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was like, do you, can Wi-Fi. you hear me? Yeah, no, Wi-Fi was a little... Uh... No, that's totally fine. I'm sure there's a delay, so don't worry if there is a delay. Everybody understands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's that's the best way to start. <laughs> I know. It's very, so the people know that I'm not making you up. You're really here. You know. <laughs> I know. I am. In, not in the flesh. <laughs> no, no, not in the over, flesh. Over the <laughs> audio waves. <laughs> well, see, technology has its advantages after all. Exactly, exactly. No, so thank you so much for being with us today. Um, and I really want to start by telling people more about you and your company because I know it's a highly successful company and then we can go into how you got there but and and what that journey was like you know for you because I know you had a really long journey to success but um so tell us a little bit more about your company yeah so you know residential brokerages and that's essentially what we do you know real estate broker They have those little TV shows on uh, HDTV and Bravo and everyone's a big fan. All this drama, you know, every, and I've been on it and my brother and and family's like, Oh my God, I know who that is. That's cool. (laughs) Yeah. My niece is like, Oh, that's how she knows me. She doesn't know me (laughs) as an uncle. She knows me as this, this guy from it. So that's exactly, you know, the industry I'm in. So there's obviously a lot of people and, you know, competing every day for business and and things like that. So I, what I would say separates me is that there's, there's been kind of like a frozen just mindset on just even from the internet, just video and and a lot of these brokerages um, haven't really embraced technology. And I have, you know, just to make things more efficient, to make things easier on the client and things like that. And essentially, that's what we do. And it sounds very cliche. It sounds very everyone's doing that. Um, but then really, the second thing is the person. So it really doesn't matter at the company level, it really matters about the person. So we pretty much have the same system that we do every single time. And, and the most successful companies just repeat the same thing. Um, so every single day have the exact same system um, throughout the day and it keeps me focused and essentially just keeps me engaged in the hardest part, which is a tough negotiation or a listing pitch against five other successful agents and that's when I need to shine. So everything else outside of that is kind of just a disciplined series that is potentially boring to other people, but I know it's necessary. Well, I, I have to say, like, I've obviously I've been I, I know your company. I've been to your website. There's like eight figure listings, you know, so it's pretty cool. And obviously, you definitely you're definitely up there. So. I want to know more about your journey. So tell us about your journey. Because when we spoke the other day, you were telling me how you weren't really a great student and you faced some academic challenges. And yet here you are, a prominent businessman. How did that happen? Yeah. So um, with the listings as well, just to throw it out there, is that, that, that does pull in the industry so clients can search, you know, essentially all the listings. So, you know, just, just for, you know, one day, all of those will be mine, but essentially um, we do aggregate throughout the city. So it makes it easier. But the, the journey itself was in 2009, you know, I I just came out of a rough patch of college (laughs) to say the least. 
where it just took me a little bit longer to get my diploma, that nice piece of paper of spending X amount of dollars and blah, blah, blah. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my friends who graduated from really nice schools, John Hopkins, Syracuse, Maryland, Quinnipiac, BU, BC. And I'm coming out of this tiny school of 4,500 people, York College, Pennsylvania. It takes me longer to graduate. And I go to Oppenheimer Funds, was there for two years and – I think that's really where it started is I just remember thinking when I'm when I was 22, 23, 24, just looking at the people on the the trajectory I would be on, you know, someone that was just ahead of me at 27 years old. They were the account or the senior account manager, blah, 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 going up the food chain. And I'm like, do I want to be that guy at the top? You know, at 50 years old, he's SVP. I don't know what he's making, but does he look happy? And about two years in, I said, I don't think I really want to do this anymore. You know, the personality that I have was being stifled and this was 2009, let alone now. So announced layoffs. They had this little thing called the recession. Right. So they announced layoffs and I literally raised my hand and was put on this list and everyone else was freaking out. I'm like, Oh, this is my way out. And went to my boss and I was like, "Uh, can I be on that list that you announced? And he said, uh, Botenston, 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 you're not on here. I said, can you add my name? And he said, what are you going to do? I, I, rem- I specifically remember the face. I was just concerned. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> 7 million people don't have jobs. 3.5 million people are in foreclosure. And you want to be laid off. You want to voluntarily be laid off. That, that was his face. He's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know, but it's not this. That was literally my response. I don't know, but it's not this. Puts me on the, the list. And I didn't know. Um, and then essentially – Got licensed. The shows that everyone watches wasn't on TV, so I had no real, you know, backbone, or I, w- I didn't get in for it for the wrong reasons. Right. But that was that was the beginning part, you know, just getting in and just just grinding. It was tough in the beginning because no one wanted to move. You know, it, it was just a really tough time in two thousand nine. Yeah. Oh, I know. I graduated law school in two thousand nine, and yeah. you know what's really funny? You know. you know, it's funny how things work because it, it's we all have this vision in our minds when we're growing up. You know, like this path, this like this solid one lane like to success and we think like oh this is what you got to do basically like it takes to the moment from the moment you wake up to the morning you go to sleep like this is what you eat for breakfast this is what time you wake up this is the school you go to this is how you dress this is how you talk this is how you walk these are the people you meet these are the friends you make this is the music you listen to this is how you have your you know voicemail recording it's ridiculous how many like buy the book things people tell you to do and then 2009 comes yeah there are no jobs you know? <laughs> yeah There's, it doesn't even matter and everybody's trying to like go in that saying it's almost like i just came from a dave matthews concert and i was like listening to the ants marching you know, you know everybody going the same direction doing the exact same thing it's like we're the little yeah. ants marching but but the truth is that you know when when you're faced with a situation, you, you your personality shines through. Sometimes, like you need to be cornered, you know, whether it's by mm-hmm. recession or whatever it is, right? So that really mm-hmm. happened to you, which is really is cool because it happened to me too. It forced that our real selves out, right? Yeah, and and you know what's funny too is that the more you you say that, it it's like I did the opposite, so. I, in other words, they said you have to get good. And I did go to a good high school on Long Island. It was a parochial school. And I, my parents thought I would straighten up there because I was kind of a mess <laughs> before then. That had, that had no effect on me. But I just remember thinking as a 17 and 18 year old, just going to school and saying, well, everyone's doing really well in the uh, SATs. Everyone's getting into all these high fluting schools and everything else all my friends and i'm sitting there and this was what i was being told that because i wasn't getting good grades because i wasn't getting good on sats because i wasn't getting into schools good schools i wasn't going to be successful so i was i was being i was being told that and i was believing it Mm -hmm. and i wasn't at the time i was i I had no idea you're the black sheep look at you yeah so i but the the funny thing is i was doing the opposite and i was like maybe i shouldn't do this so i i just always was a little bit different but the thing was i was looking at all my friends 
that were going down the path of success and I was going down the path of failure. <laughs> well, you see, that's the thing is about you. And the reason I really wanted you here is because you are my, my flag of, of example. Like you're like the guy I want to wave into everybody's faces and be like, listen, this is exactly what I mean when I tell you that it doesn't take any sort of ABC by the book rule. There's no Bible to this. There's no rule. You just have to be yourself. What the world needs from you is for you to be yourself. You got to follow your heart, your intuition, what you were born with. Like you're, we're all different. You know, I was talking to you when we were talking on the phone. I was like, you can't, if you judge an elephant by how it, how it climbs a tree, everyone's going to think it's stupid, you know, but it's yeah. not, you know, it's just like, you got to just be yourself and do the right thing. And did you have any like mentors or books that you read that helped you get where you are now? So the mentors were definitely later on. And, you know, that, that's a, that is so big nowadays because obviously YouTube wasn't what it is now, but you know, the, I'll start with books first. Cause that's, that's definitely a better story <laughs> is that I, and specifically because everyone graduates, I'm 22 and it's the summer after my senior year where I should also have graduated but I'm still in summer school to then hopefully get a degree or my diploma in the fall. So I'm taking just a semester in four weeks and then another semester. And this is all during the summer. I'm working at the West York Diner on I-85. That was brutal. I took a bus there. It's like straight out of like something to hear from your grandma, <laughs> you know, walking up both both ways, you know, in sandals in the winter. And on on top of that is that there was – I, I think that was the click is that I looked around York is a dead zone, uh, which is like, it's like a, you know, flyover area in Pennsylvania. And I remember just looking around, I'm like, okay, maybe I got to do something different. So I went on this, this website that people have been talking about called, <clears throat> excuse me, called amazon.com <laughs> and, uh, and ordered a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Dr. Susan, Susan Jeffers. She taught at the new school. And that changed my whole thinking because I was so ignorant to the idea that I could change. I was so fixed mindset. It just I had such a fixed mindset that because of who I am, because of my grades and everything else, that I couldn't change. It was, it was just impossible. And then that book really just was the changing ground. And then from there, it went into Feel the or, um how to win friends and influence people, obviously classic. And then that really just started me on the journey. And, and it's 12 years later. And honestly, if it wasn't for those tough times, there is zero way because I see in my friends, you know, a right. lot of my friends who took that path, are they, are they happy now? I don't know, but, um, I'm like a pig in a, well, maybe not a pig in a blanket. That's not <laughs> a pig in mud. There you go. Pig in mud because I I took a different path and it was really challenging because you the doubters love to come out because you're that you're that different person right well you know it's funny because everything that's different all the innovators that's what makes life everything we mm -hmm. have came from someone who thought outside the box like otherwise we wouldn't have anything new you know and it's funny to think that i mean i started this podcast back in february and now there's like 23 episodes already that have been recorded and published here and some of them are starting to blend for me but i do have some favorites and a lot of them have to do with what you just said like my very favorite one is that change is always possible literally mm -hmm. as long as you are alive you have a chance to reinvent yourself and then I also love like the joy of doing unto others because they really believe that, you know, give, you know, if you give, you receive and from sheep to shepherd, which is about being true to who you are mm -hmm. and not waste time trying to be someone you're not and not follow other, other people's footsteps. And what I like about those is that they summarize my life and myself in a nutshell. And that's what we were talking about before, like how we are like very similar people. Cause yeah. you know, I believe that as long as we are alive, it's never too, too late to reinvent ourselves. Right. And, to go after what we want in life, because if we really want it, we're going to find a way to get it. And then that joy, you know, exists in really helping other. And there's an energy that comes back to you when you do that. Um, and the more people you help, the happier you are. And also 
that we need to be ourselves because everyone else is already taken and who we are is exactly what everyone else needs from us. That there's no one roadmap to success. We create our own journey, our own path to success. And I know that you created your own path to success, which really resonates with me. And I really want to share some of the challenges that you faced and how you overcame those challenges. Because like you were saying, it was rough. It is rough. Like when I started my own firm, everyone in the world doubted me. Everyone was asking me how I was going to get clients. Everyone thought I was crazy. My God, you're giving up health insurance. You're giving up 401k. You're giving up a path to partnership. Are you freaking insane? I was like, I don't want to work for someone else. Are you kidding me? Like, that's mm-hmm. not me. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be happy. There's no price to my happiness, to my time. And I have a vision of what I wanted out of life. This is the one life we live, right? As far as we know. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. So like, what were your challenges and how did you overcome those challenges in your path? Yeah. And it, there's, there's definitely a young ignorance in the beginning that I went through, you know, just not knowing what someone say, like my brother who is 10 years older, more seasoned clearly, or my parents, clearly more seasoned in life. And there was just a young ignorance in the beginning that going into an industry I didn't know that caused the recession (laughs) where no one was lending. And I get into that industry. There was that there was a young um, ignorance, but it was more of like a faith. It was more of a what if this doesn't work out? It was like, what's the worst thing that can happen? And you play it out in your mind and, and then you, you say, OK, it's, it's actually not that bad. And then on top of that, I, I think one of the biggest things that I went through or that I go through even now is that so when I went from Oppenheimer Funds, which was the financial company that I volunteered to be laid off to go into <laughs> real estate, I uh, sent out an email and I said, hey, listen, don't email me here anymore. I just volunteered to be laid off. And I'm, I sent it to a bunch of people. My brother CC's all. And by the way, he's very you know, successful at a bank. And he CC's all. And he says, who did you talk to before doing this? <laughs> and I still have that email. Oh, my I God. I still have that email. So it, it, like you didn't, frame it that didn't email. even. Yeah, it didn't even really click. Like, why would I talk to someone else? And, but here you go. So then I go into a small firm downtown Manhattan. At, it, now I'm in real estate. And I said, you know what? I'm doing rentals for two years. And I'm going from rentals. But, but I know the, the game is sales. You know, rentals doesn't really make you that much amount of money. And the firm I was at really focused on rentals. So I said, all right, I got to go to another company. So I literally door knocked. And walked up and down the offices I wanted to work at, door knocked, is your manager available? No, who are you? I said, I, you know, here's my resume. Because people weren't taking my phone calls. So I said, I'm just going to show up. And then, you know, I, I, on top of that, I had someone said, like, you're doing really well in rentals. Why would you go into sales? So at that point, I actually started to use people's doubt. And that was the fuel. You know, that was really the fuel to me succeeding. Um, so there was, there was definitely, uh, the biggest one was starting my own firm because it was Thanksgiving and my entire family, we have, I have a very big family. We probably have 40, 30, 40, 30 to 40 people at each one. And at Thanksgiving, and I kind of just said it, I was like, yeah, I was thinking about thinking about, <laughs> I, I had like no plans of starting my own firm, but I, I just said it to my uncle. And then my uncle aloud goes, Rita, who's my mom, he goes, Rita, Charles just said he's going to start his own firm. And then I was like, no, shh. I'm like, don't say that. And then like one head turns and then another head turns. And then my mom, and then he says it again. And then they're like, what do you mean you're going to start your own firm? Exactly what you went through. Mm -hmm. So I'd say the challenges externally the toughest are from the people that you know the closest. Right. It's, It's so funny that other people's insecurities and fears somehow you know are the ones <laughs> because i was gonna ask you actually did you have any fears or doubts or anything or was it like you just knew yourself so well that you knew that like your happiness was so much more important than following that like typical path that everybody else follows in that you just needed to try this out and see if it worked out because you know what sometimes depending on how old we are and what we've got going on like for me i was thinking you know i i'm married but i don't have any kids my for me, obviously, also my husband, he had 
his he wasn't he was working for for a firm for a CPA firm at the time. Like now he's in a different path too. Thank God, like he's like doing really well as a chief financial officer for a real estate developer in the city, which is really also taken a, a totally different turn, which I really pushed him for. But before that, we had a really typical, you know, what I call the middle ca- middle class syndrome, <laughs> you know, like yeah. basically following that like paycheck kind of thing where like okay you gotta go do this do that work for somebody else and make a paycheck you know blah 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 which is great and i'm not talking down upon that because if that's what a person's calling is that's what they should do but it's just not everybody else's it's not everyone's call not everyone is going to have the same you know calling so did you have fears like when you were thinking of starting your own company or how did that work out in your mind you know it's funny the the way that you phrased it is and it's like I look at someone who's, you know, light years, no pun intended with like, say, Elon Musk and ask, ask they ask him the same question. And he kind of just looks at him like, not really. <laughs> so my fears are more or my fears were and I always try and put it past tense. So I don't say that I still have. Obviously, yes, I still do. But at the time, it was more like. I did the math and I said, here are the three scenarios. If I do this amount of business, how long will I last? Mm -hmm. If I do this amount, blah, blah, blah. So I did three scenarios when I was starting my own company. Um, And real estate is just like you. I don't have a biweekly paycheck. I don't have a 401k. I don't have insurance. I don't have paid time off. I have, (laughs) it's like you eat what you kill, you know, is essentially how my cousin puts it. This is the interesting thing is that, This, this still is my biggest fear is that I wake up, go to the gym and that's my high. That's my, that's my drug is the gym. And when I leave the gym, I'm on such a high going into sales calls, which is essentially what I do every day. And between going to the gym and going to work, I see the faces of people leaving the Port Authority. So anyone outside of New York City, the Port Authority is the folks coming in from New Jersey to New York. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like a bus depot. And they walk down my street going to work every single day. And I see their faces. And that's my fear. (laughs) My fear is the dur. I call it the dur state where they're just dur. And there is no they've thought about it. They've thought I, I guarantee they thought about it where they said you know what in 10 years where am i going to be in a year where am i going to be five years where am i going to be and they they have this this learned helplessness where they've learned to be helpless you know and obviously that's a very famous you know controversial if you want um you know test that was done but if you think about it i don't want that so i actually i don't know what the opposite would be but that's my biggest fear is is becoming one of those just learned helpless where I have no control over my creating my future. I completely so. agree with that. That's such a cool, you know, analogy you just made. And cause it's so true. I remember thinking like, I, I might not know exactly what I want out of life because that's a big deal. Like life is long, hopefully, you know, for lucky, but I know what I don't want out of my life. Yeah. And it was like a process of elimination. <laughs> I was just like, you know what I don't want? I don't want to ask someone else if I can take vacation for this how much amount of time and at this time of year. I don't want to wake up every day at a specific time, drive to a specific location to do work that I can do from anywhere else. I don't want to be bothered constantly by other people's gossip. Nothing against it. I mean, I'm a social person. I live in this world. I'm really easy. Like I make friends easily. It's it's easy to hang out with me. But I also when I'm working, like I'm in the zone and I just really wanted to like, you know, have my vision implemented. And I had a different idea also of how to treat my clients. I really wanted to give my clients something that someone else's vision was not mine. They didn't want to give the clients that. And if I'm working on their, their dime, I owe that to them. Like they, you know, they have a work product that they're expecting from me. But what I really wanted was to create something where I don't own a person's time. I just expect a work product. So if somebody's going to work for me, they can work from anywhere they want. Any, I mean, they could be in the Bahamas, like sipping a freaking margarita. As long as they're, it doesn't show in their work product and their work product mm-hmm. is excellent, I shouldn't care how, you know, how it was done because what matters is the results. It's a results-only company, firm. Like that's what I want. I want something where 
if you want to go to your kid's baseball game, you can. You know, if you want to take vacation more often than anybody else in the world, you can. As long as the product is being delivered for me. So, yeah. and, and I couldn't do that, in, you know, working for someone else's uh, dollar, you know. So, and it is true that, like, just when you walk around, you see people's dissatisfaction in their faces. And, but at the same time, they succumb to fear. And sometimes what we fear most is exactly what we need to do. Because that's how we kind of, like, grow as humans. It's, you know, like if, you know, if we really even have a soul, our soul develops through that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I was, like, I was actually watching, because I know you have a really cool channel um, that's also a motivational speaking channel, right? So mm-hmm. can you share more about that also and what it's called and how people can tune into your channel and find you? Yeah, it's it's more of a i know it's going to be my legacy like i want to build out my company as big as it can as big as i can i just want to go back to to two things that you said oh, that, sure. that yeah. really Please. popped into my head is that i cannot stress to people enough to to become self-aware so there's books out there called emotional intelligence daniel goldman you can go check it out there's some good books about it but I cannot stress the your ability to say, OK, if I do this, I will be unhappy if I. So an example was I would go out every Friday and Saturday and get slaughtered. And then I would wake up on, on Saturday morning and Sunday morning, be hung over. <laughs> and I said, OK, I don't need to go to the gym or I don't need to do anything productive because I'm hung over. And then I remember thinking, am I actually getting drunk? Because I don't want to be productive. Am I getting drunk because I use that as an excuse to not be productive? So then I said, you know what? And that's the self-awareness. Right. The self-awareness is that, is questioning what you do. And, and then that brings you down a path that you say, okay, let's do the opposite one weekend. And then I did the opposite one weekend. I rode a bike on Saturday and then I ran on a Sunday and I said, wow, I feel great right now. I was more productive. I ate better. I slept better. I was a little sore, which was good. <laughs> and then I, I thought about it and I said, okay, so what if I take this in every area of my life? You know, and yeah. another example is that when I have sugar, I can't concentrate. So I literally, now that I'm a triathlete, I, I've cut it out, but do that in other areas of your life. When I talk with this person, how do I feel leaving that conversation? When I go to bed at 11, I wake up at four or five. Am I tired? Let's go to bed earlier. Wake up, you know, like play around with your life and, and, and A, B test and find out, okay, when I do this, what's the result? That's the self-awareness. So right now I'm so self-aware on what makes me tick what makes me happy what makes me you know it, it here's the best example when my mom and dad come and visit the city they're from long island they come and visit the city and my parents inevitably i know that if we go to and they always say no let's just choose a restaurant let's walk by the restaurants i know they'll choose the third restaurant so i always have two throwaway restaurants that we walk <laughs> by it's it's like i already know we walk by we look at the menu my dad looks inside he goes no second one look at the menu talk to the maitre d looks inside no so the third one so this is the funny thing is is that i know that and and i went to visit my parents and everything else i know what i want so if my mom says what about this i said let's do it and she says what well what about that i said mom i already said um i want to do this that is such a small thing in life is that if you don't want to do it say no if you do want to do it say yes and then you stick to it and that 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 literally has come from uh, and this is the last thing I'll say because I'm on an epic rant right now. No, you're not. You're great. Don't <laughs> worry. Seriously. Because I, I had a whole episode on saying yes to saying no and how important that is. So this is actually great. So please. Yeah. <laughs> and and on top of that, there's, you know, there's a couple of people at the gym that I work out with. And, and like you said before, is that, you know, you could always say, what do I, what do I want? But then more importantly for me is what don't I want? Right. So there's a couple of folks that, uh, you know, I had had a conversation that, you know, he's probably in his mid fifties, you know, 20 years older than me and essentially just said, and he looked unhappy. How do you look unhappy after you just kicked butt at the gym? And he's just like sitting there. I'm like, dude, why are you unhappy? He goes, this was his exact line. He said, because Friday is so far away. It was Tuesday. 
It was Tuesday. This guy's a 56 year old man, maybe married, maybe have kids, whatever. But he was thinking about, and I'm in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, dude, you are 20 years older than me. If I had that feeling, I'm yeah. like, I need something to change. So in my mind, I said, what did this guy potentially do to get to this spot? You know, like what, what was the path? So I know not to do that. And, and that's as, powerful as anything else is like what made this person either unhealthy or unhappy or their relationship isn't good or they haven't saved any money or they overspent and i see it all i'm in real estate so i see their finances i see their relationships i see their their health and i say okay what did these people do which was you know kind of mentor wise um as well I think that that's so important what you just said, because I actually I have friends who have given up a let, you know, the alleged like, you know, iconic careers because of, they, they, you know, because they were brave enough to realize to recognize who they are, to be self-aware, like you were talking about, because you know what, there is no price to happiness. If on Sunday you're dreading Monday, something is wrong. And I know that most people think that that's just how everybody else is. And you know what? You're not wrong. It's true. Most people are like that, but that doesn't make it right. You know, it doesn't make it the way it should be. And of course we all need workers and and everything, but we need better work environments. That's a different topic. But I do think that finding out who you are, remembering actually, because not finding out is not really the right answer. Like we all know who we are deep inside our core, just remembering who we are, what makes us tick, what makes us happy, and following that path no matter what anybody else thinks. Because you know what? If you have, like, a great career as a doctor, but all you want to do is be a lifeguard at Jones Beach or whatever, then that's what you should do. If that's mm-hmm. going to make your Monday happier every day, if, if what you want to do is something that's a little bit out of the box or whatever, you should follow that. Don't like Nobody else gets to live your life but you. So mm-hmm. the idea of trying to live someone like someone else's dream is just so exhausting and so sad people and people do it you know and sometimes it's a cultural thing you know the, it, it happens a lot more in certain cultures than others but it's definitely mm-hmm. true and it's definitely true for the middle class that's why i call it the middle class syndrome because we have like the you know, people who worked hard to get here and it's such a comfortable spot and you just don't want to leave it you know when you're poor and when you're rich there's less risks there's less to lose you know mm-hmm. so it's it's definitely um it's good that you talked about that because, you know, remembering who you are, being self-aware, that's all very, very important. Knowing what you don't want is extremely important. But yeah, no, but, but I was listening to your channel. So I wanted you to talk more about that because I really do think that that's awesome. I do like that your YouTube channel. I yeah, also that... do Facebook Live a lot. <laughs> I do. I do a lot of Facebook Live. Facebook Live is the uh, the business side, the one that makes the money. Uh-huh. And, you know, it, it, it really came to a head uh, probably about earlier this year. So the YouTube channel essentially is in, you know, for me, I'm not, I don't monetize it. You know, I I don't have ads. I don't have sponsorships. I just know that there's a lot of people out there. Essentially I want my, my legacy to be that personal development and growing, or at least at the very minimum people thinking that, okay, I'm not that good in this area. It's okay to learn about it. It's okay if I'm not good at an area. I'm learning about it. So for me, I didn't know anything when I started. I didn't know about health. I didn't know about sleep. I didn't know about sales, marketing, making cold calls, negotiating, all these things that I'm pretty good at now. There's I'm a student, so I, I, I'm just a pupil. But I wanted some folks that maybe don't have the mentors or they can relate to me, which is – personal development, self-development, whatever you want to call it, uh, to be cool. And I, I know that's going to be my outlet. That's going to be my legacy. The company essentially is going to be the platform for me to make money so I could, you know, go on speaking engagements in the, in, in the future. Not for, you know, I know the money's going to come. It's not even about the money. I know a lot of people that are doing things that I'm like, dude, you don't even believe in that product. You're sponsoring a product. Don't even know anything about it. You've never read about it, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's more about the practical advice on all of these books, all of these years, all of these 
trials, tribulations, almost failures, almost bank- bankruptcies. I know a book that is in me, which is going to be the five things on how not to start a business. <laughs> you know, I overhired, I overspent, I did everything wrong. I got the nicest office space and then I almost went bankrupt. You know, you, you see that with a lot of IPOs and a lot of these companies, they throw this blowout party. They put so much money into the R&D and then they launch a product in the market doesn't want it and then it goes out of business so for me it's more what am i thinking about right now and right now this year has been a heavy 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 focus on mental just so mental health is a you know it's like a, it's like a buzzword now you know it's like uh, it's like a, it's like a diet yeah. it's, only, it's the it's the atkins diet it's the low it's the high car or the high fat low carb diet <laughs> right. you know things like that so for me, mental health is is a deeper subject that someone that's went to school that's good for them. But but mentally, I I feel that's where everything is. I think this entire conversation is about. I think that's the only way that you can be. You don't even need anything to be happy, and that that might be I don't know controversial. But here's an idea: you take a plane ticket and you land in Fiji like I did, and you see that people don't even have any siding on their houses. They don't have any AC. And by the way, it's Fiji. It's in the middle of the Pacific. It's it's drenchingly hot in August when I went there and we were in air conditioning. They weren't in you then. And they were, so their, their introduction is bula bula. You get off the plane and they're, they're so happy and everything else. And that was, that was the time where he said, you don't need anything. You don't need to be sold the next iPhone that like, or that comment or that follower or anything on Instagram. That's all, you know, don't even get me started on the social media, but <laughs> it can't, it, it comes down to um, m- mentally or this year, all of my videos have essentially revolved about around, you know, just mentally controlling my thoughts, my mind, you know, your, your ego is there to protect you. Your ego is there also to make sure that you don't do anything that you want to actually do. So that means maybe wake up early, maybe do a marathon, maybe make a sales call, approach that pretty girl, ask that guy out, start a business. That's your ego. Your ego protects you and it's there for a reason. So you don't cross the street without looking, but your ego also keeps you where you are. The self, which is the capital S essentially says, okay, this is what you really want. You want a better relationship or you want a better body. You want more money. You want something else. That's yourself. Everyone has one of, has both. It's just, which one are you really focusing on? We focus on both, you know, throughout the day, but if you start pushing yourself a little more to the self, it's capital S self. Then you start saying, wow, I'm living into the authentic person that I am here to be instead of who my parents want me to be or society or my government or the corporations or whatever. Um, it, it's a deeper subject, but that's essentially what I've really focused on, you know, this year. I love this, Charles, my God, like that's, that's so beautiful. I totally agree with you. It's so funny because we are so similar. And I also like, I don't capitalize on this and I hope this is my legacy too. I'm hoping eventually I'll write a book about all these episodes that I've been doing eventually like a, a high vibe advocate. I just want people to be happy because I've, I've gotten so much out of life. I feel so blessed. You know, we all learn from other people. Like you said, all these books, all these authors, mentors, other people's lives, cultural relativism travels, you know, and I did a whole episode on that too, the importance of traveling because it puts life in in perspective. You don't know what's out there until you go out and see it for yourself. And, and it is true. I mean, even in my own family, like I have a side of my family that isn't wealthy and you know what? They're the happiest freaking people in Mm -hmm. my family Because you don't need stuff. You need something else that comes from within. You need like peace and you need to find that peace and you need to find that, that, that middle ground where you like literally are so content. Contentment doesn't come from things. It comes from relationships. It comes from your own relationship. Like you said, with yourself, remembering who you are and being true to yourself and saying no. And you know, when you want to say no, say no, don't say yes. Cause then you're, you're only sabotaging yourself and i i think we're just so so similar and i'm gonna definitely put you know you're like the female version of me i know <laughs> <laughs> i'm the male version of you it's pretty funny yeah. we're both water signs right like i you a cancer and i'm a scorpio yeah yeah so yeah. i mean i know not everybody believes in that but i definitely do so it's so funny 
Uh, I'm going to put like, you know, in my, when we, when we finish this podcast and I'm doing the description, I'm going to put a link. I don't know if I, if they get to click on the link, but they can always copy it to find your YouTube channel because they definitely have to listen to you more. Everyone should be listening to you. you have it's, a lot it's of great real. things to say. It is real. It is it's real. real. And it's live. And they get to actually see you, which is really cool. I think it's awesome. I really. I'll, I'll just throw this out because it just popped into my head. And I had a hefty conversation with someone that I, and hefty as in, it was probably our first, you know, some could say it's an argument. I consider it a discussion <laughs> <laughs> this morning with a colleague that uh, he's, he's about a month, month and a half in really good at making the sales calls and everything else. And one of the biggest things that, so he came in and he had these, these grandiose ideas. He goes, you know, we're going to take this company and we're going to run with it and everything else, which is hundred percent true. And the reason that this year has been probably my best year, just overall is one simple reason unplugging. So earlier this year, I saw a documentary and it followed around this guy who grew up in New York City and got into trouble, went to jail, was in drugs and everything else. And he was addicted to just that that lifestyle. And then he went to jail and he's like, I need something to you know get me out of this. So he essentially became a triathlete and that's his obsession. And I saw this. I was like, holy cow. I'm like, I'm addicted to if I'm going out, I go out a lot. If I'm eating bad food, I eat a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just have an addictive personality. So what I noticed was that I was consuming the wrong content, all these things, blah, blah, blah. So really what it came down to unplugging. Okay. So the thing is mentally is that if there is no space to ruminate during the day, in other words, if, if you go from work, which is in front of a computer screen and you're leaving work on your phone, You put your phone away, but you're still listening to music. You come home, you turn on the TV. You then are done with the TV, and then you go back on your phone, and then you go to bed. There is zero time to say, maybe I'm a little unhappy right now. Maybe maybe something needs to change. And earlier this year, I, I had... Business was great. Relationships were great. You know, health was was pretty good. And I just remember just... Two weeks between Christmas and New Year's, my mind was just ruminating like something needs to give. And I gave my, myself space for my brain to just start saying, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? So I see all these people on their cell phones. That's not where the answers are. And it sounds really corny and woo-woo and everything else. And I start literally losing everybody. But – in I'm not even going to say go within because people don't even know what that means. I mean, go week without Instagram. Like I don't have it on my phone. Um, I leave my phone at work because my mind needs the clearance. We never had it like this. We're evolved, you know, little monkeys flinging around New York city and everything else. And the reason I say it like that is because there's no ability to change if your body doesn't, or your mind doesn't think that you need to change. And then you'll start regretting five years later, 10 years later, 50 years later, um, not changing. So I don't, I don't even know what I just said in there besides the fact of just a little bit of unplugging, a little bit less scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, a little less music. Just go without music on your commutes um, and then just see where your mind takes you. And it's going to not be comfortable. That's really why people don't do it is because they're uncomfortable in their own thoughts. So they need to look at their phone. And this is the last thing I'll say is that a good test This is the best test. You get on an elevator. I always stand in the back middle and I, and I just stand in silence. Don't look at my phone, nothing. The door closes. You look at the first person that goes to their phone. The first person that goes to their phone cannot sit in silence. They can't even sit in silence to go three or four floors. So I, I see that as a sign of weakness, that they're not able to – and all they do is just pull out their phone and look at the screen and then put it back away. And um, I would say that that's, that's the first step is you know unplugging a little bit from everything that we have. Well, you, you just touched on so many future topics for me because one of the topics I want to talk about eventually here is missing out so you don't miss a thing. You know, like, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of FOMO in today's society through technology and everything. You feel like you have to scroll 
because otherwise you might miss something. But the truth is by doing that, you are missing something. You're missing yourself. You're missing your life. You're missing what's going on around you in the present moment. So being present means sometimes you have to unplug. And I totally agree with you. I mean, I am a big addictive personality in certain ways. Not completely. I got to say, thank God, like I don't have terribly addictive personality, but I do love social media. I post post every day. Um, Mm. And I, I do tend to feel like I have to look at specific people's stuff and like them in, in a comment because I don't want them to think that I don't like them, you know, or that I didn't see it. You know, it becomes like a thing almost like you're going to be judged if you don't do it, you know. But then when people start noticing that if you don't look at it, it doesn't mean that you don't love them or anything. It's just that that's how you are. That actually, and you have to develop that. And it's a slow increments thing. Like you said, just go like a day, go a, a few hours if you need to, within a day, then a week, whatever. Just try to go. Because, you know, the other topic I want to talk about is meditation because you and I both meditate and I know that. Uh, And the only way out is in this idea of sitting with yourself, finding that inner peace, finding that space where you're fine, no matter what's going on around you. You don't need distractions. You Mm. you are fine. You're just totally content being you. That's important. But that also takes development, self-development. So that's all, you know, (laughs) it's so funny because those are all topics that our future topics for this podcast. I thank you for saying all that because that was actually really good. (laughs) And, and by the way, it's, it doesn't end. It's not like, Oh, I meditated. I'm done. Right. right. I made one sales call. I'm good. I went to the water, right? Like it's like brushing your teeth. You're not going to stop. Your teeth will decay. (laughs) Yeah. That, that will, that's, that's why it's challenging or people see it as challenging. So Charles, you're telling me I have to make sales calls every day Yes, because if you don't make sales calls, then you have no business coming in. If you don't go to the gym every day, then, you know, it's it's that is I would say that's what separates people is that they're able to find maybe not even fun in the mundane, but they're able to accept the mundane. Right. You know, they're, they're able to accept that. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say these things is that, you know, the guy that works with me, he pointed out, he goes, so you're telling me you have the exact same breakfast. I'm like, yes. He goes, so you're telling me you have the exact same lunch every day. I'm like, yes, you have the exact <laughs> same dinner every. Yes. That's why Steve Jobs or Zucks or any of these other cats out in Silicon Valley wear the same thing because they don't want to make a decision on what they're going to wear. Like I make a decision on what I need to wear because I wear a suit every day, but my mundane is, okay, every Monday I'm going to be at this gym class. Every, is it fun every time? No, of course not. Am I used to it? Yes. But I just know that I don't want to have that as a variable in my life. I want to have something as a variable in my life that yesterday I had the opportunity to save a deal that was going to get me $62,000, $62,000 into my bank account. And it was a variable that I needed to be sharp and on because it was, it was dead. I was losing $62,000, but that's the variable that I want to be able to focus on. Not what am I going to wear? What, what's, what's going to happen? I want my variable to be, how do I get this deal together? So it goes to the closing table and I was able to do it today because I was sharp. I had my mind, right things like that. And that has taken me, you know, 12, 12 years. It's not overnight. But. Oh, yeah, I know. And, but it's all about priorities and each person has their own. Like, you know, if you're in- person is going to have their own, you know, priorities, but it's very true that if you can minimize the amount of time wasted on things that don't matter to you and that are not going towards your goal, that's important. Um, I have one last question before we wrap up and everything. And that is, how the F did you get on Bravo? Like, how does that happen? If somebody's here listening who, like, is a real estate agent or, like, ha- was thinking of going and opening their own real estate brokerage firm one day, like, how do you get to be, like, on TV or, you know, what did you do? Yeah, so the, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not, I wish I could say it's this grandiose, crazy story, but when you're in the industry, you get invited to all these, these, um, these events and during the events at the bottom of the email, Ryan, Frederick, Luis, you know, who, you know, I have some funny stories about <laughs> all of them. Um, I'll, actually, I'll give you, I'll give you two of them is that one of the shows that I was on is that Frederick's at the time partner, not husband, but partner at the time, you know, this was, five, you know, a couple of years ago, 
And they were selling, you know, he's a, an artist, so he's selling art. And I was like, actually, I really like this one. And I'm talking to him, his uh, partner, and he goes, he goes, do you want to buy it? And I was like, yeah, you know, what, what's the cost of it? He tells me the price. And then one of the producers overhears the conversation. He goes, oh, you're looking to buy it? Let's bring the cameras over. So the cameras come over, and then Frederick comes over, and – the the producer goes okay you know say it again By the way, so when <laughs> when someone says is this real okay i'm telling you no it's not real this is not how it, it this is not how deals go down like are the people real yes are the buyers and sellers real yes is that how it went down no it's tv but this is the funny thing is so the uh frederick's partner goes yeah and then he says a price that's double that he just quoted me and and there and he's tall and I'm on there and I'm yelling at him. I'm like, what are you talking about? You just told me a different price. And then Frederick's like, no, it's this price. Why are you arguing? Why are you trying to? And this is what's on, this is what's on camera. So like I leave and I don't think anything of it. And then like a month later, uh, <laughs> people like send me, the, send me in the like, dude, why were you yelling at them? I'm <laughs> like, oh my God. So all they cut was me just like, rah, 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 rah. And I'm like six foot and they're like six, five, six, six. So I'm like looking up at them and the photo is like me pointing at them. That's uh, so that was, that was funny. And then the other one was, um, was Ryan was hosting an open house and we were just, you know, BSing and everything else. And then he goes, listen, uh, the camera's on us, you know, like say something about the home. So I'm like, it's a beautiful terrace. And that's all they cut. So for like a year, everyone was like, oh, it's a beautiful terrace. That's a beautiful <laughs> terrace. That's a beautiful terrace. And I'm like, we talked before that and after it. We, that was so uh, I would say it's it's definitely great. It's good publicity. It's good that people see you, uh, you know, talking to these guys and they are very successful. So they're doing, you know, Ryan probably make 12 million this year himself. Uh, Freddie's up there as well 12 to 15 million dollars as a real estate agent pretty you great know, I'm yeah nowhere near that exactly um one day you know i want to be running a very successful brokerage and disrupt and everything else but it's it's literally as i tell the folks that i work with one percent better every day that's it one percent it's not some grandiose it's not some quantum leap it's nothing like you were 15 years old and you happen to be a childhood star. And then you look at them now and they're totally washed up, you know, <laughs> because they were on 90210 or saved by the bell or anything in the nineties or friends or something. And then they kind of just like dribble down from there I'm the opposite where I was a loser in the nineties, early two thousands, but I, you know, took the punches and I kept on going. So I, I, I think that's, the best way to sustain success is just 1% better and don't wish for quantum leaps because, you know, I, it's, it's really not going to happen. But it's how you eat an elephant, right? A bite at a time. It's just, yep. It just gets step by step. It's another, yep. it's another episode here. I keep like quoting episodes, but it's true. It's just like this, these topics keep coming up. Um, and no, this was really great. I really appreciate your insight on this. I really do think you're a great example for so many people. So many people are going to resonate with your interview today. And I'm really, really glad that Chelsea connected us because I think your story is incredible. I am honored to know you. And as we both know, we could talk forever. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, all good episodes in life must come to an end so that new episodes may begin. And um, I thank you once again so much for sharing your story. Thank you for here. having me. Of course, my gosh, it was my pleasure. And you're always welcome to come back and Thank you also for like always motivating others through your channel as well. Like I said, I'm going to, you know, plug it in at the, at, in the description of this episode. And mm. um, yeah, so thank you. No, thank you. And that is all we have for today. And uh, thank you guys for being with me and for listening to me and for being a part of my journey. If you're enjoying this podcast, please share it so that it reaches the hearts and ears that need it most. I am Camilla, your High Vibe Advocate, looking forward to your outreach at HighVibeAdvocate.com. And as always, looking forward to our next meeting right here on my channel. See you next Wednesday.